Hi, thank you everyone for joining me this Friday. Uh, it's not such nice weather out there. Um, and the concept of these live Instagrams on Friday is to, as a direct request from our database. And we asked everyone, what, what do you want to hear from us about? What do you want us to do? And we had this concept of a fun Friday where I would interview somebody who is a great uh, friend of the Cosmetic Skin Clinic and has been often a personal friend of mine for many years. And it's often a professional in the industry, but somebody outside of the cosmetic industry, but affiliated to it. And today I'm going to be talking to a great friend um, called Andrew Barton. Andrew actually was somebody I met many years ago. He was on 10 Years Younger, uh, the original 10 Years Younger, which literally debuted uh, literally years and years ago. I think it must have been nearly um, 15, 16 years ago. And he ran throughout the whole of that show. Um, and subsequent to that, he's had a very se successful career with his own salon, uh, his own uh, range of products. And he's really a great person to find out lots of facts about. Because frankly, if you're anything like me, I've had a bit of a hair disaster during this lockdown period. And to have Andrew um, on board would be great. So I'm waiting for him to come um, online now let's see if he will join us please join me andrew otherwise i'll be um talking the whole time but anyway let me just tell you about the concept of fun fridays and what we're going to be doing so this week it's going to be andrew barton other day other times it's going to be uh, we're probably going to have somebody um who's a makeup artist a celebrity makeup artist we're often going to have um we're going to have a journalist we have lots of different people joining us so that we can actually um talk about all things hair um the other thing as well is that on other days of the week, um, Mondays or Tuesdays, we're going to have more professional talks. So we're going, I'm going to be talking to fellow professionals in the aesthetic industry, maybe plastic surgeons, uh, menopause specialists, all kinds of other people that we're going to be talking to at other times in the week. So keep an eye out for that and we'll be bringing those to you as well. So I'm still waiting for Andrew and uh, his dog. So he's got a beagle. Um, and he's, he's actually going to hopefully bring his beagle on, but we're waiting to get contact with Andrew. But in the meantime, um, it's a bit like one of those things that goes wrong on telly. Um, I'll talk to you about some of the other things that we have heard from patients and feedback from patients. So we are going to be offering a virtual consultations, so consultations to our database and to new patients as well, who have specifically requested help and information on skincare, uh, help and information on, again, all things aesthetic. And I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be starting these next week. So if you have a look at our newsletters, have a look at our website, we'll be able to tell you the timing of those and how we're going to be rolling out those virtual consultations. And the first member of staff that's going to be doing this is uh, Tara Jackson, who's one of the most long-standing uh, practitioners at the Cosmetic Skin Clinic. She's been with me um, 11 years. Um, and she is going to be the person that will be rolling out those skin consultations. Um, and she will be doing everything from what products you should perhaps be considering using at the moment, whether you should be upping your ante during this time, because when we're in lockdown, it doesn't matter if we look a bit peely or a bit red or a bit flaky. So she's gonna be discussing that on one-to-one -one, uh, consultations, and also perhaps finding out about treatments that after lockdown might be appropriate to improve your skin health and make you look um, as fresh as possible. So in a half an hour consult, that's a complimentary consultation, she can go through all things aesthetic because she has a very broad knowledge of all things cosmetic. So um, that will be next week and she'll be rolling those out throughout the whole of next week, the week after as well. There will be more of my specialists that will also be doing that as time goes on. And hopefully, depending on when we all get back to work, maybe in June, uh, we will then start to get back to a little bit of more normality, okay? So Andrew's just giving me a lovely little message. He's having issues trying to get through to me. 
so he can't quite get online. But I will be talking about some of the things um, that I've experienced. I'm sure those of you who are watching have had it too. I mean, probably since I was about 18, I've, I've never seen my natural hair color. Um, and uh, Andrew is, was, I know I spoke to him yesterday about this and he's quite adamant and he has quite strong views on people using their own color at home, unless you're really used to doing it. And I'm certainly not used to using my own hair color. I always go into salon, have it done. But Andrew actually um, is trying to, he said to me yesterday, he's worried about people who are not used to coloring their own hair, suddenly getting a bit busy at home, taking that on board, because he feels that a lot of people will do more harm than good. So I was really interested to see what his take on that was. Um, and of course, covering grey, which I'm getting more and more as I get older, and I've got a bit of a quiff of grey at, at the front of my hair, is actually quite hard to do uh, well unless a professional does it, or unless you're really used to doing it yourself at home. So he had some really good tips, which you might have to write on the feed if he can't get live um, to help me here, because he was very, very clear that people shouldn't get the scissors out and shouldn't get the hair colour out, uh, you know, get the colour out at all. Um, the other thing that uh, Andrew was saying was that, I don't know whether you ever saw it, but once it actually went, um, I think it was on morning TV, it was talking about how people could do their own haircuts. Um, and there was um, actually one minor disaster on TV a few years back, where someone was showing people how to do their own haircuts. Um, and actually a lot of people ended up trying to follow that advice and I think actually to their detriment, I think a lot of people ended up with actual disasters, which they had to have sorted out. So I think unless someone is really good with the scissors, don't get them out at home. If Andrew isn't going to join us, which I think it looks as if he might not, I'm just going to talk about some of the feedback we've had from patients. And I'd welcome what you guys would say, maybe send in um, some information or what you want to talk about. A lot of our existing patients who've had skin treatments and been coming for years um, have expressed that they really um, are finding not having things done um, regularly really makes them, you know, it really stresses them out because they're used to having regular treatments. Now, we all know at this time, really, a wrinkle here and there, a problem with, our, you know, the way we look here in the, in the bigger scheme of things, it's nothing, is it? It's absolutely nothing. However, we all want, you know, if we've spent years maintaining the way we look, trying to look our best and trying to maintain those treatments and invested in those, there's nothing worse than seeing that things um, aren't looking so good now. So I, my, my top advice for that is don't, don't stress about that. As we said, there's far bigger things going on in the world. We all know that just keeping our hydration levels up, keeping, you know, really, you know, try and do a bit of exercise, which again, I didn't do for the first two weeks of lockdown. I sort of almost felt like um, it was a strange twilight world. It was almost denial. But I think now we have to become adjusted to it, don't we? We're becoming more used to living uh, in lockdown. So for me, um, all I've tried to do is um, drink more water, stay more focused on my exercise. I'm walking more than I was before. I'm trying to use more skincare. I can be a bit hit and miss with my own skincare. And patients who come to see me know that they're often much better and more motivated to, to do their skincare than even I am. Hey! Thank God, Andrew. Thank Hello. God. I've only held this down for a little while. I was just talking about skincare. I'll just finish up. So again, I've just adapted, you know, it's more health, well-being. Um, but now let's talk. Let's cut me out. Here he is, the man. Um, and welcome, Andrew. I'm so pleased you managed to get online because that's why everybody wants really to hear from you, not hear from me wittering on. So I said how we've known each other right back in the day. And I started to talk about the hair disasters that you don't want people doing when they're at home. And you were really adamant yesterday that there were certain things that people, you, you felt quite strongly about. So can you just give me an idea? I said, Roots, you know, those of us who are never used to seeing our natural hair color, and certainly not gray. A lot of people are getting the home products out. What do you think? What's your view on this? Well, I, you know, I, I think let's get this into proportion. We're not talking here about years of waiting for the hair. Exactly. 
You know, it's it's a month, a couple of months. Um, hair on hair grows quite slowly, actually. But of course, that demarcation line shows quite obviously if you're wearing a heavy colour in your hair. So there's lots of different ways that you can disguise it. You know, things like mascaras and hair wands and hair mascaras, hair brushes, even dry shampoos. Disguising the way that you style your hair. So sometimes wearing a little bit more texture rather than wearing it completely straight or smooth. You know, dressing your hair up into different hair up hairstyles. There's lots of different ways that can you can disguise it. My, my biggest concern and my biggest worry is that, you know, a, a box colour does not have the techniques or the expertise that, that your hairdresser has. You know, we, in the salon, we, we never mix just one mixture out of a box. We're mixing five, six, seven, ten. We can do the social distancing with hairdressers. Goodness only knows how that's going to work. But, you know, we could talk about that. But hairdressers and beauty therapists, but people cutting their own hair because, you know, my, my fringe is getting you know, longer and longer and longer as, as, as the days move on. What would you say about people wanting to do a quick trim? Well, again, I, I, I'd avoid it really because, you know, one, what feels like a quick trim um, you know, there's a lot of technical aspects involved when a hairdresser holds the hair, you know, the tension that they hold it with, the way that they use the scissors, all gives you kind of you, your individual fringe. And I think you're cracking it yourself, Tracy. Do you know what I mean? You're sweeping it to one side. You're wearing it slightly differently. So, you know, in, enjoy and embrace this little bit of change that's happening. And again, please just, just wait for the hairdresser's scissors. Yeah. Is there anything at all you'd say that we could do? So apart from the colour you said using your, your wands and you said to sort of change the sort of way that you dress the hair and tie it up a bit more, which I think is good. Any other top tips or are they your two mainstay things well, to do? Two big, they're two biggies, but, you know, I, I was talking to one of my clients yesterday and, you know, most, most women are very busy in their lives. They've, they've rarely got time to properly blow dry their hair and one of the best one of the biggest quotes that i'm always asked for is how do you create a long lasting blow dry how do you make a blow dry last well most of us have got a bit more time on our hands at the moment so spend a little bit more time on blow drying your hair enjoy this time that you've got because it's not about a quick blast and running a brush through it and getting out the door to work no i did try that i did try time. that and it didn't go very well well, I, 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 look, I, had, I had really bigger and bigger hair and it just didn't look good. You see, so, follow, follow those rules that the hairdresser follows. Start at the bottom, blow dry one section, take the next section, blow dry that through as well. And always use heat protection. You know, one of the things that I often say as well is people often ask me, what's my favourite styling product? Yeah, um, somebody did I'm, ask actually, what's your favourite home care product? So my favorite styling product is, is it's a goodie and it's an oldie and it's mousse. You know, mousse? Yeah. Oh, wow. I mean, with mousse, you, you can create anything with mousse. The polymers inside the product really help to make a long lasting blow dry. So, you know, if you're walking <laughs> the dog and you've been battered around, the chances are that if, if you've blow dried your hair with mousse, it will make the hair texture and the blow dry last longer. Okay, that's really interesting because I always steer clear of products. I mean, I'm one of those, ever since I had my first daughter, who's now 22, I treated myself to a blow dry at the hair salon every week. Yeah. Every single week. Well, you know this, you've done my hair, Andrew, haven't you? Yeah. Many. And Andrew was the first person that told me I must stand like that because my, <laughs> it was something to do with my it hair. It was straight, was it straight? <laughs> And everyone was cutting it at the moment. Yeah. So I think that, and, and the funniest thing about going to have hair done with Andrew in the salon, when he had his salon um, in Covent Garden, was that he was such a big celebrity. People would come in as he was doing your, your blow dry. People would come in and ask for his autograph. Do you remember that, Andrew? People yeah. want to stand with you and actually have a photograph with you. And they came from, they came from abroad. They were coming.
fitness is is beyond the physical it's also about the mental yeah. and the emotional um and it's very much like a meditation to me whether i'm doing yoga or whether i'm swimming or i'm running or i'm lifting weights it's it's my time in the day and it's all about me um and it means that i can kind of forget any pressures that are happening in my life personally or professionally and it means that i can focus on just being me for that little part of each day and and i've built that into my daily routine i do it every single morning one way or another uh, um and yeah it, it it's it, it's part of what helps me to function yeah and you have done a lot of charitable stuff and and you also take care in in the way you know facially you look and your and and you you are you prepared to share a little beauty secret that i know about yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. i mean i'm i'm not embarrassed to say yeah i mean i i am i'm 53 i was born in 1967 and you know working in the beauty industry as i do i think appearance is very important you know mm -hmm. I, I never do my own nails. Do you know what I mean? I have a manicure and pedicure kind of every week um, because you know I'm working around women's faces, so I'm yeah. actually good. Yeah. And, you know, how can I talk to my clients about beauty if I'm not interested in myself? So yeah. it's about kind of good skincare, and um, I guess one of my essential parts of kind of looking and feeling good about myself, and this is not necessarily about age or aging. Uh, but I, I've worn Botox for over 20 years now, and mm. Craig, you've looked after me for most of that time. Yeah. Um, and you know, for me, it's about feeling fresh and looking my best. Yeah. Not necessarily about trying to look younger. I'm 53. Yeah. I, I'm happy with looking 53, but I want to look the best 53. Yeah. That I can and you're dealing with you yeah, you're dealing with the public and actually looking relaxed and, 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 and the best the best you, you can look. And funny enough, we were looking through old photographs of uh, the, for, just to put on newsletters and there was a I actually loved it because it was a photograph of us about 10 years ago and I certainly looked a hell of a lot younger than I do now. But we look we look very fresh faced, but we we didn't we didn't look bad, you know, we've not yeah. done badly over the last 10 years. And all these things are just helped to to maintain. Yeah. And um, I think that that's an important thing as well. Tell me, can you tell me, because I want to keep this short and sweet, but I want to make up for some just five more minutes in the time that we've got. Give me a funny story. Have you got a funny story of when you were doing hair or a celebrity story that I don't know whether you can share those well, kind of things, but anything that would be of interest to people well, listening? I mean, celebrity stories, you know, I, I've, I've worked on everybody from Eva Longoria to Robbie Williams to Debbie Harry to Davina McCall. You know, I've worked with so many different people over the years, but I think what I've always realised is that they are people just like me and you and you know they come to me for styling and their hair but they also come full of all their emotions and whatever's happening in their life and usually I'm working with them when they're working they're on a press junket or a launch or something so you know they're very focused about what they have to get done but I think for me is that if, if I find out that I'm doing a celebrity's hair I often get really really nervous because I'm scared that I'm going to get disappointed if they turn out to be some kind of diva. Uh, and, and that's happened on numerous occasions, which I'm, I'm not going to talk no, about. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, um, you know, so but that's, that's your biggest worry, that they'll not be what you yeah, would like them you know, to if be. You know, if you've got a view in your mind of how you think somebody's going to be, and then they completely disappoint you and they're, they're not like that. It's just like, yeah. you know, I remember the first time that I ever did Jerry Hall's hair. Do you know what I mean? I was like, oh, in awe. I mean, I was so kind of, just such a famous model and such an incredible life that she'd led. And, you know, she was just so wonderful. has become a friend and... You know, it's, That's it's nice to know. Yeah, it's really nice to make connections yeah. with yeah. people. So tell me your, if you had now, I'm going to... and 60s and older they're they're going through so much emotionally and physically anyway and if their longer hair has been for them a symbol of their femininity 
Yeah. How on earth would you take that away from somebody? But the secret in that is that it's still got to be in a good shape. Yeah. It's still got to have a good colour to it, a nice, pretty colour, and it's got to be in good top tip condition. Yeah. You know, and when Absolutely. I say in good shape, it can be long, but you know, for most teenage girls, one length centre part of hair is not that flattering on most people. No, there's but some people that can, can do that. Something a bit more going off with it. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I think some 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 women look amazing with long hair. So something, the last thing, just to wrap up, uh, something somebody threw at me yesterday, and I've lifted this from them, but I thought it was quite fun. Tell us one fact that we don't know about Andrew Barton. Something secret that none of us know. Oh, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, things stay on social media forever, so um, I'm going to be careful <laughs> when I say. I'm going to go back to what you talked about earlier that yes I have run lots of marathons for charity um, and this is not a secret I'm very proud of it but I, I was adopted as a child and without adoption my life would have been very very different so I'm a patron of the British Association of Adoption and Fostering. That's a wonderful thing for us not to know I did know that myself as you know Andrew but um, I'm sure that's something that people uh, will say, yeah, that was very interesting and, and good for you. Andrew, thank you so much. I'm so pleased you could get on. Me otherwise, too. I would have been waffling on for 20 minutes, which wouldn't have been great. So thank you, thank you. Keep in contact and um, have a great rest of the day. And see you all at the Samsung. See you soon. I'll need it. Thank you. Bye, bye Andrew. Bye, bye, bye.